Petition. Chuck the code in front. Hi. Hello, Hello Ms. Smith. Waiting on everybody else to come on in. Now, Ms. Smith, where you sit in the classroom? 
He's talking about like actual classroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about our class. I'm trying to picture the face. By um Miss James. Oh, right next to Miss James. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now nah, nah, I could put a face to you. Okay. All right. Been doing my work? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that don't sound too good. I'm gonna do it. Okay, you kind of understand the if and if logic. Yeah, I understand. Okay, yeah, that's good. Like I said, we'll we'll uh, like I said, if anything, we'll we could always go back over something or like I said, if you got a question about something in the, in a, that we did in the past, we could always go back over that at any time. Cause it's all how would I say it? It all comes together. So like you got to learn everything. You can't just say, well, I'll forget that and not learn it. It's going to be a part of all what we're doing still. All right. So, so, so far, you're the only one join. They'll probably come in a little later. I'll give them a little more time. It's not one thirty yet. The link was there, or you just used uh, the, uh, the URL I sent out? I just use the um the zoom under canvas and press join. Okay, right, okay, 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 okay. I should be able to sign the roll right now. I think I found. Okay, it. yeah. You been talking to Miss James? No. Yeah, because I haven't heard from her either. Like, normally, like, she'll send an email saying, oh, Miss Sylvester, I had issues with whatever or something. I, I haven't heard from her. Yeah, I yeah. sent her, um, I sent her something on Canvas one day, but she didn't. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Yeah. I'll wait a few more minutes, then I'll get started. Because I still post them, you know, online. Because uh, I think I post, I did post the uh, the lecture from Tuesday online also. But if you saw that, did you see any of the other uh, videos that I posted recently? No. Did you look? Because those videos, they, they, uh, if you look at the, the uh, notes that you see on on the, on the screen, they're really from the 193 class, but it's the same information. It's just that they show code, okay? So so then don't get alone like, oh, this is not our uh, book, but it's just the it's exact same sections in the book, but uh, the, the other book, the 193 book show code, Okay. See who else to join. Oh, we have somebody else. Uh, who else? Uh, Miss Zhu. How you doing, Miss Zhu? She probably got a speaker. Oh, she got a mic on. Okay. Uh, you signed the roll, so make sure you sign the roll. Okay. All right. So we can try to get started. So this chapter is on the repetition structure. Now, uh, when we first started writing code or looking at uh, code, we was looking at code that was executing line by line by line by line by line and then exiting. And uh, that's what that was uh, the sequence structure. Like we may have said something like, uh, see out this, see out 
uh, your name, see out your address, see out um, your uh, date of birth, and stop. It's just gonna it just execute line by line by line. So uh, the second part, which was in the the chapter four, we dealt with the uh, select uh, 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 structure. All right, selection structure, where you had to select which path you was going to go, what you was going to go do, perform true the true uh, logic, or you're going to perform the false logic. So that was a selection, uh, uh, well, that was part, parts of a selection structure, where you may execute some statements in sequence, but then you get to an if statement, and then that if statement determine whether or not you go one way or go another way. So that was the selection. Now, in Chapter 5, we are dealing with the repetition structure. Now, what happens with the repetition structure, it allows us to perform a series, it could be one or more statements, multiple times, all right? So what your program is actually doing is actually looping and, and uh, performing the, the one statement or those multiple statements over and over and over again until either some condition is met or not met. Okay, so that's what this section is on. All right, so uh, it tells us we're gonna deal with, we're gonna introduce the, uh, uh, the repetition structure. We're gonna talk about the condition control loops where we might have something like uh, while X is less than five. And, and so the, the, the loop will perform until X is what? equal to or greater than five, then it'll stop. And it says the while and the do while and the do until. The do until is kind of uh, just similar to the do do while. Um, we're going to have a, a count control, or we're going to deal with count control loops where we, we want to loop to perform so many times. Like if we want to loop to perform three times, we could say while uh, set x to zero, fall into the loop with x less than whatever number like three and then increment uh our x and then it'll stop once uh it counts up to that three or we could use that for statement where the for statement can say okay perform from this up uh, from one to ten or one to less than equal to 10, which will perform 10 times, or from zero to less than 10, that will be 10 times. All right? Calculating the running total. We somewhat looked at that already, but calculating the running total normally requires the variable that you actually adding to, to be on both sides of the equal sign. Uh, kind of like if we have... Uh, x equals zero, then we say x is equal to x plus one. That's a that that's a a, a running total because as, as as many times as we execute that statement, we keep what incrementing x by one, incrementing x by one. We're not we're not saying x is equal to one each time we get to it. We keep incrementing. Um, a sentinel value. We're gonna go over that. That's just a value. Being that we do, we're dealing with loops. A sentinel value is a value that you're going to use as a marker to exit out of a particular uh, loop or something. Like uh, you might have a loop that says, okay, while, uh, while X is not equal to, say, 999, right? So you can perform that loop, perform that loop, and when it keeps asking you, do uh, 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 any key to continue, you hit a key. And then it'll perform the loop again. Hit any key to continue or to perform the loop again. It performs it again. And then when you put in 9999 and hit enter, it kicks out. So that's a sentinel value. Some type of value that's set to allow you to uh, exit out of a loop. Then just like we had nested ifs, we have nested loops. And uh, it just is what it said. You got a loop that's within a loop. So you got an outer loop that's uh that's control that's controlled by its uh values and whatnot but then yet and still you have an inner loop that controls by its values and we'll look at that and we'll see how we can figure out how many times uh the inner loop or the entire loop 
is performed based on unnested loops. Okay, so let's get started with our chapter. All right, it says the introduction of repetition to repetition structures. All right, a repetition structure causes a statement or a set of statements to execute repeatedly. That means over and over and over based on some condition. Programmers commonly have to write code that perform the same task over and over. For example, suppose you have been asked to write a program that calculate uh, a 10% sales commission for several uh, salespersons. Because we've been writing code now that pretty much uh, performs information on one, one person, one item, one whatever. But now that we have loops, now we can we can perform it over and over on several different um, items or persons or, or things or whatnot. So although it would not be be a good design, one approach would be to write the code to calculate one uh, salesperson commission, then repeat the code for each salesperson. And what they mean is replicating code. And what happens when you replicate code, what? Your program just get larger and larger and larger. And you have the exact same code written multiple times. All right? So that's what it's saying is, like, say here. Right here we got, uh, got our variables, our constant variables, then what? Enter the amount of sales. Then we input sales. Then we say display the commission uh, for the person. Then another the inner amount of sales. So see, this particular uh, section of code is exactly as what? This code up here. So, and then the commission information here is exactly like the information here, all right? And this one exactly like this one. So what we did was we really duplicated what? Code, all right? So loops allows us to uh, not have to do that, okay? So... It tells us, as you can see, this is one long sequence structure containing a lot of duplicate code. There are several advantage, disadvantages to this approach, including the following. Number one, we just said duplicate code makes the program larger, which sometimes, make, well, depending on the size, will make it long, uh, well, uh, a runtime longer. Uh, you're writing long sequences of statements that can be uh, time consuming. And then if part of the duplicated code has to be corrected or changed, then the corrections or changes has to be done what? In each individual part. So that, that's one of the things. And if you miss one of them, then your code is not really executing properly. So it tells us instead of trying to duplicate code, what we can do uh, is, it says, instead of writing uh, the same sequence of statements over and over, a better way to uh, uh, repeatedly perform an operation uh, uh, to, it is to write the code for the operation once and then place the code in a structure that, that makes the computer what? Repeat it as many times as you need it. Okay, this is done with a repetition structure, which one, which is one of the loops, which is commonly known as a loop. All right, and what I'll do before we get to the checkpoint, let's look at this. In this chapter, we will look at two broad categories of loops, conditional control and count control. The conditional control loop uses a true-false condition, all right, <clears throat> to control uh, the number of times that it, rep it repeats. A count control uh, repeats a specific number of times, all right? And we will discuss uh, the specific ways uh, that most programming languages allow you to construct these types, all right? So let's look at online GDB. Uh, we look at, at online GDB, let me save this. Uh, uh, all right, let's save this. And let's say we, uh, I, I wrote some, let's say loops, where's loops? Let's look at this. Now, uh, everybody can see this pretty clear, right? Let me control, make this a little bit larger. 
All right, so let's look at this code right here, all right? Let's just simply look at this. What I did, I just put three different loops in the same program. Look at this. What we have here is some code, int x equals zero. We know what we're doing here. We're just initializing x to be zero. C out, inline, inline. All we're doing is uh, outputting two lines before we uh, do anything. Then look here, a while statement. This while says while x is less than three. So what happening here is we're going to continue to execute these two statements, all right, lines of code, all right, until x is equal to or greater than three, right? Because three, three is not less than three, three is equal to three. So, but each time I perform this loop with this while, I need to do what? I need to increment my x so that what? x don't get stuck at zero and my program stuck trying to do what? Executing this code for life. You understand? So you have to have some kind of uh, way so that x can be somewhat approaching uh, the number three. Because if x never reaches three, then your program is just stuck in, in that loop with that, with that code, all right? So if we look at this, while x is less than three, this says what? x is what? Zero. While zero is less than three, all right, what we're going to do? We're going to output. We're going to tab. Then we're going to output what x is. x is zero. Then we're going to output the while loop, brcc, new line. Then we increment x. Zero is equal to zero plus one, which is going to store one in the X. It's going to come back up and ask if one is less than three. It is. It's going to perform this logic. It's going to output one or tab, output one. Then it's going to output while loop VRCC. Then it's going to increment. Well, it's going to come here and say one is equal to one plus one. So one plus one is two. So it's going to overwrite the one here with two is two less than three. Yes, it is. So there, it, therefore, it's going to perform this again. Tab, write down the two, write down while loop of uh, BRCC and inline. Then it's going to come here and say two is equal to two plus one. Two plus one is three. Is three less than three? No it's greater than three. So it kicks out and continue on with the program, okay? So all I want you to do is be concerned with that part right now, all right? So let me run it and let's see what's happening. And I, and I want you to just disregard the, 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 the other output. So when we run it, watch what happens. Just look at the top one. What happened? It printed what? Zero, which we had what? The first time through, is zero less than three? Yes. It printed out zero. It printed do while, BRCC, went to a new line, incremented X by one. Is one less than three? Yes. It tabbed, print one, uh, while loop, BRCC, go to a new line, increment by one. All right. Is uh, two less than three? Yes. All right. It outputs two and uh, while loop, BRCC. All right, new line, increment by one. Is three less than three? No. And then it continues on with the program. Okay, so that's what a loop does. It, rep it, uh, re it uh, repeats uh, the execution of code. Now, the thing is, if I needed to repeat this more than uh, three times, say I wanted to do it uh, 100 times, all right? All I have to do is go here and put 100. And it's going to execute that code 100 times. So see how easy it makes it uh, for you not to have to try to duplicate something over and over and over and over and over and over again. So let's run this to see. And we run it. And we'll see this long output. And look, from zero. But now you say, Mr. Sylvester, it's say 99, which is true. But what? Zero to 99 is 100. 1 to 100 is 100. 
but also zero to 99 is one is, is 100 instances all right so that's why you, you don't don't get confused with that so from zero zero would be the first one and 99 would be the last one so that would be from one uh well, 100 uh iterations all right so see how easy it would be just to change that all right i want to change it just to uh back to three or to four times then i could run it again and then what it executed it what four times zero one two three which is four all right so that's how that the uh a uh, a uh, 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 loop works all right so that's one loop all right another loop basically the same but it's it's called uh it's the do while now if you look at this one this loop what had to be true for us to execute this uh this code inside of this while loop x had to be less than four so somewhere outside of that that loop we had to give x a value to where it can what fall into that loop because if i did this if x was equal to 10 here and then i knew two new lines and then i said while 10 is less than four is 10 less than four no so it will never do this all right it will just continue on with the next uh statement in the program so that's one of the key things when you're dealing with a, a while loop you have to set the condition outside the loop so that it can satisfy itself to be to, to perform what's in the loop but then too sometimes you might create a loop based upon a value and if that value holds true, then, then you're going to perform something. All right? But for now, we creating loops to perform something. So we want to make sure what? The value is, uh, we'll make this true so it'll fall in here. And then remember what? We have to make sure what? We have to increment X. So Because what? If X stayed at zero, then we, we what? We wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't fall out the loop. All right? So that's just like doing this. X is equal to X minus one. What I'm doing, I'm canceling out my addition. Because if I say, uh, if it comes in at zero here, all right, and then it prints zero, we increment by one, it X is one. We decrement by one, X becomes zero again. So we just made this an infinite loop. Mean it's going, uh, it, it's going to stay stuck in that particular loop forever, all right. So you you don't want to uh, you don't want to have infinite loops, all right. Okay, so let's look back at the notes. Any questions? Any questions? So let's look back at the notes. All right. So like I say, control conditions. All right. But let's look at the other loop then, because the other one is somewhat controlled also. The other loop is a do while. Now remember what we said about this loop. Your condition had to be met before it can what? Execute these statements inside this uh, while loop. But if we look at this one, what we did, we set X back to zero because this is our condition down here. Again, and I used four on the, on the other one. I could just change that back to three so you really won't be confused. So now, um in this loop we set x back to zero and it's going to do the same exact thing that the above uh loop did count uh, uh see out new two new lines x is equal to zero but then we have do and it's going to do everything between these curly braces all right i'll put the x but then what do while loop brcc increment by one but notice where it's asking the uh, question at. It's not asking the question at the beginning of before the uh, the execution of the statements. It asks in the question at the end, and it has a semicolon after it. So the do while loop assures that you execute the, the statements at least one time. No matter what the va the test value is, you will you are guaranteed to execute the statements in that body at least one time all right but then if you execute it one time and it holds and it doesn't hold true it just kicks out but if it does because what 
uh, it's going to perform this, all right? X is zero. It's going to print zero, whatever. Then it's going to increment by one, and then it's going to say uh, it's one less than three. It is. It's going to go back to the top of the do, and it's going to output one, increment one uh, by one. You get two. Two less than three? Yes. I'm going to go back to the top, okay? And it's going to uh, output uh, two and do while loop, and then it's going to add one, and it's, it's going to be three. Is three less than three? No, it kicks out. So this loop, you have to have a value for X that allowed it to fall into the loop. This loop, you would perform it at least one time, all right? Because I could set X to be uh, 10 or 100 or 1,000. It will perform this at least the first time, one time. It just say, do this. After you do this, check to see if X is less than three. If it's less than three, do it again. If it's not, kick on out and continue on with the program. Okay? So that's the difference between the do and the uh, do, I mean, uh, the, the while and the do while. Here, uh, the, the, the do until, it pretty much uh, kind of like the negative uh, side of this. The do until, and you don't really have a command in C++, the do until allows you to perform something until a value is equal to something. But you can use the not, like here, while, while x is equal to 3, that's just like saying while x is not equal to 3. And what we're doing, we're incrementing, and when it goes equal to 3, it kicks out. So it's doing the exact same thing, all right? And uh, we'll get to the for loop a little later which does some similar, uh, uh, the, the same thing, but uh, it's, a, it's a different format, okay? So we have uh, the, the while, the do while, but then the not part portion of it, which can uh, be kind of considered as the until loop, all right? So let's go back to our uh, uh, notes. So look here. Condition control loops, the while, the do, the do while, and the do until, okay? Both the while and the do while loops cause a statements or set of statements to repeat, which we just saw in the program, as long as the condition is true. As long as it's, if there's no else condition for a, a while loop. Like for an if statement with loops, there's no do this, else do that. No, it's just if it, the condition is true, do this, all right? I'll repeat this, all right? So uh, the do until loop causes a state, statement or a set of statements to repeat until a condition is true, all right? So let's look here, and let's, let's kind of look at, keep in mind what we've just done with the program outside uh, uh, in uh, online GDB, all right? So it says uh, some, uh, well, the while loop gets the name from the way it works. While a condition is true, all right, do, some, do something or do some tests. The loop has two parts. One, the condition that is tested for a true or false value, and two, the statements, statement or statements that, it, that is repeated as long as the condition is true. So remember uh, uh, when we did the if logic, when we had if cold outside, do something, but continue. Now we're not continuing, okay? We could, like this would be, if cold outside, if it's true, we do something, but now we gotta go back or whatever. So while it's cold outside, we're gonna continue to do something. You understand? So we'll continue to do something uh, while it's cold outside, all right? But kind of a bad example, but we could say what? While, while choice is not equal to yes, we're going to perform these statements. We're going to perform these statements. While, while, while choice is not equal to yes, we're performing these statements. All right? When perform is equal to anything other than yes, then we're going to continue on with the program. Okay? So that's uh, what the logic is. All right? So you're performing something, checking it. All right? If it's true, perform a statement or multiple statements, then you gotta go back and check again, see if it's true, perform it. If it's true, if not, 
you continue on with the program. All right, I'll close this up. Now, it says the diamond symbol uh, represents uh, the condition of a test. Remember, we had the if, now we have what? A while, because the while will have what? While x is greater than whatever, while, while, while uh, name is not equal, whatever, anything, all right? So notice what happens if the condition is true. It goes back and it checks again and it, and it perform it one or more time. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so it says the the uh, the condition is tested again and if true, the process repeats. All right. If the con condition is false, the program exit the loop. All right, and it, it continues on with the remainder of the program. Okay. Now, um, if we look here, um, writing a loop in pseudocode. So we wrote the pro. Remember, we wrote a loop, a while loop. This is a, a in pseudocode. You'd have what while, and then whatever the condition is, and that would be in the parentheses. Correct. Right. Um, then you would have whatever you need in curly braces. Right. That would be in curly braces. All right. Now, uh, remember the while loop? While and the statement. Let's see if I could compare them uh, side by side. Okay, if I could pull it down. All right. So we look here. While, while, condition. This is the condition. X less than three. Then open curly braces, close curly braces. All our statements that we want to have in our uh, logic, and this just uh, in the in the in the while. So there's no command; it's just open curly brace, close curly brace. So that's the uh, syntax for the while loop. All right. So uh, now I need to get back. So I didn't want to have to do that. All right. So. In the general format, the condition is the Boolean expression. Well, like I say, x greater than whatever, et cetera. All right? And the statements that appear in the lines between the while and the end of the while, which would be the curly braces, is the body of the loop. All right? So when the loop executes, the condition is tested first. So that, like I say, you have to make sure that test is true for it to fall in. If it is true, the statements that appear in the body of, of the loop is executed or executed. All right. Then the loop, what? It starts over, test, executes if true, and then start over, test. If it's false, it, ex it exit or continue on with the program. All right. And also, this says that uh, <clears throat> you need to make sure that your, your information is indented because you don't want to have uh, situations where you don't really understand where your logic is. So see here, I have an open curly brace for my uh, my main, all right? But then I have indented, and then I have my while in have this, and then all of my body is indented. It just kind of makes it uh, for a better uh, understanding of what's going on in your program. It's no right or wrong. Like I said, you won't get errors in the program, but... Uh, it just would make it kind of hard for you to understand, all right? So let's look at a program, all right? Look at this one. Say uh, input, keep going. Well, this program, what they've done here, they've written a program to where uh, you actually are setting uh, keep going to Y, all right? Remember, uh, we talked about that. Keep going to Y. Now, they had to input so many uh, uh, salespersons, uh, sales and commissions. So inside the loop, it says, while keep going is Y, in an amount of sales, so an input sales. So you input that, it calculates the commission, and it displays the commission. But look what it does. Do you want to calculate another, then another commission? Uh, in a Y or, or for yes. So input, keep going. So at this point, the system stops and allows you to what? Input a value for keep going. So and then so you don't exit out the loop. You go back and check while keep going equal yes. So if you keep putting a letter Y, 
uh, is going to what? Keep on allowing you to input some data. Now, so if you look here, as long as they put in Y, it executed. As long as they put in Y, it executed. When they put in no, then it ended. Now, let's look at a, a sample program of that. So what I did was, I think it was loop two, uh, if I open it, uh, my projects, leave that one, uh, loop two. If we look at this program, look at this program, all right? Looking at this program, what we have here, ah, take this out. All right, what we have here is just a program that you, where you input a name, all right? We have a string variable called name. We have a, a char variable called choice, all right? And notice we got what? Single quotes on, on, on uh, that char variable because it's only a single character. So now, uh, this clear screen, just the clear just clears the screen. So every time I execute my loop, my screen going to be clear. I won't keep getting... Uh, information scrolling up. So you're going to ask the person, you're going to fall in the loop. Well, first we set choice to Y. So what? While choice equal, double equal, remember that, Y, no semicolon. Uh, then the body, uh, clear the screen, see out, enter your first name, then see in name, then see out, hello, name, and then go to a new line, how are you doing today, question mark. Okay, but then it says what? Do you want to run, I'll say D, run the program again? And I got in parentheses Y slash N. Now, if you notice how the program is written, it don't care what character you put in as long as you put in Y for it to continue. But I just put the slash N. I could have said N or Y to run the program again. All right, so this is a little deceptive. All right, but... When we put in Y and it's equal to Y, it's gonna what? Perform this, all right? As many times that we put in the letter Y, it will perform what? This body of, uh, of statements. So let's run it, okay? Run the program and it says what? Uh, I don't wanna do this, I wanna show it. It says in a first name. So uh, say I in a bill, B-I-L-L, all right? Then what? Hello, Bill. How are you doing today? But then it says, what? Do you want to run the program again? If I put in Y, what's going to happen? Allow me to run the program again. If I put in Tom, hit enter. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? And then run it again. So as many times as I put in the uh, letter Y for choice, it's going to allow me to what? Run this same sequence of code, all right? So I'll put in um, uh, Chris, all right? And hit enter. Hello, Chris, all right? How are you today? Uh, are you do I mean, how, how are you doing today? So if I put in N or any other character, because remember I told you I didn't test for uh, no or whatever, but you, there's a way you can do that. But if I put in N or any other character, dollar sign, period, whatever, is going in the program, all right? So everybody kind of understand what uh, how loops actually works. Loops will perform that, that that series of statements as long as that condition is true, and then once that condition is false, it will continue on with the program. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? All right. So let's go back to the program. All right. So all it's saying here. With the while, as long as we put in what? Y for keep going, just like when we put Y for choice, it will continue and execute the program as many times as I do that. No matter what, it will just continue to execute that body of statements because what? That value is equal to Y. Okay? All right? So, um, Look here, let's look at uh, what's, what's going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll this in some. All right, so this was, uh, this is the actual flow chart, all right? So we declared our variables, commission, uh, uh, our uh, commission rate, and our uh, keep going. So look what happens. 
we said keep, remember it said keep going to, to Y. All right, so the first time it was automatically tr true because it was by default set to Y. All right, and I'll uh, enter an amount, you enter an amount. Uh, well, so you, I mean, your output this, you enter your sales amount, then it calculates it, and then it displays the, inf the commission. But then what? Uh, do you want to calculate another? Then you have to input your answer. All right. They were well, here. Input keep want to keep going. If you input yes, it goes all the way back and start all over again. If it's Y, it will do all of this all over again, asking you, do you want to uh, uh, enter another commission? If you put Y, it goes back and perform everything all over again. And then as soon as we put a value, anything other than Y, then it will what? In the program, which is somewhat the same program that uh, we just looked at in online GDB. All right. So look what it tells us. The while loop is a pre-test loop. Now, what does that mean? That means, as I said before, is that before you can fall into that loop and execute those statements, you're going to have to have a value that is uh, that will make your condition true. All right, before you can fall into the loop. So that's why it says a pre-test. You have to test, uh, test before you actually execute the statement. Remember the do while, you will actually do the statements and then do the test. But the while loop is a pre-test loop, all right? So that's all it's saying here. It's a pre-test loop, all right? Now, an infinite loop. So what's an infinite loop? It, uh, it, a loop, an infinite loop is a loop that does not or cannot end, all right? For whatever reason, whatever you, or your logic is, you have it to where you, no matter what's done, you, you cannot exit out of the program. Give an example. Let's go back to online GDB, all right? Let's look at uh, this program here, all right? Um, if I did, well, I don't think I can do that. I think I got an error last time. If I do this and I run the program, I'm going to get an error. Oh, no, I did. So what happens is, what have I done right here? I all, I'm, I'm going to always assign choice to equal what? Why? Because that's assigning, not initializing. So if I type in uh, uh, Mary, all right, type in Mary, do you want to uh, run the program again? I'll put X. Look what happens, all right? So I'll put in something else. I'll put in uh, Richie, all right? Hit enter. Do you want to uh, say I'll put in for no, all right? Uh, hit enter, but it's still what executing the program. What's happening here is I am in an infinite loop, meaning that I cannot ever get out of that loop, or the program will eventually either uh time out or I have to type in some uh control uh key to exit out of that particular loop. So that's one way of having an infinite loop, you know, having it to where your, uh, your expression does, will, will always hold true no matter what you do, all right? Another way, so I'll type in uh, uh, and, uh, and try to get out. I can't. So I'll have to do some kind of mechanism. So I use Control-C and I exit it out of the program, all right? Now, this is the thing. Uh, that's one way. Another way would be uh, somewhat like this. If I did uh, something like uh, uh, CN uh, name, all right? But really, I want to CN what? Choice, all right? So I do a CN name here, and my program going to run and I'm going to be, I'm, if I do a run, all right, and I'll put in a name. I'll say, okay, Bill, okay, 
give me my information. But then it says, do you want to run the program again? I should be prompting for what? For choice, but I'm prompting for what? Name. All right. So I put it, I'll put in a uh, choice. I'll put in a uh, no, but the N is actually being stored in what? Name, because I'm saying right here, CN name. And I hit enter and it goes back to enter another name. And you're wondering, well, what's going on with my loop? Uh, it's just continuing on. So I enter name, I'll say uh, Wade, all right? I'll Wade, I hit enter. And so my program is steadily running, all right? If I say no again, so it's steadily running. So I'm about to break out. That's another way of uh, <clears throat> having an infinite loop, all right? So you got to be careful on oh, this, and that's also because of this. All right, and you got to be careful uh, in uh, in writing your code and understanding what's happening. I'm gonna run it again with this in the uh, uh, bill and say no. See, uh, Tommy, no. See, even though I type no, it's continuing because I'm never putting in a value for choice, and choice will always be what. Here, why? Okay, so you got to be careful of that, all right? And then when you're dealing with uh, numbers, if you never increment your numbers to reach the uh, the the the, uh, the testing point, you can stay in the infinite loop. So let's let's go back to that other program that we had. Uh, let's leave this one, and let's go back to uh, loops, just loops. All right. So, what I'll do, I'll, I'll remove this. It's not going. It's not going to be an issue. I'll remove this out. Now, so here I have this loop here. If I comment this line out, okay, I've just commented what x equal x plus one. So what happens here? Uh, x is equal to zero, while x is less than three. So X is zero. Is zero less than three? Yes. So I'm going to output this information, right? I'm, I'm, this is commented out, so it's not increment next. When I come back here, X is still what? Zero. So it's going to perform this. It's going to act zero less than three? Yes. It performs this. It will not increment. It's commented. And then it's going to say, okay, zero less than three. So you see the pattern? It's going to always act if zero less than three. So what's going to happen is just going to keep on executing that, these statements and never leave out to execute any other part of your program. So let's run it and see what happens. And we'll see with, the, with X being a number. See? Oh, no, X is, look, X is what? Zero. Now, you're not really seeing what's happening, but it, it's continually printing out uh, zero while loop BRCC. You can't see it because it's all the same information, all right? You cannot see it. But uh, if I do this, I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to do a control C to break out. I'll stop. Let me stop it. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another variable just to show you. I'll say um, B is equal to, well, comma uh, C and T, all right? is equal to zero. All right. All right. Back up print. Okay, C and T is equal to zero. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna output X, but I'm gonna also output C and T, which don't have anything to do with the loop, con controlling the loop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment C and T. All right, C and T plus plus. And this is the same as saying uh, X, uh, C and T is equal to C and T plus, uh, plus, uh, plus one. So I put that, I gave you that example in here. So let's run it and let's see what happened this time. Remember, X going to stay what? Is it working? See? X is zero, but see how these numbers, well, it did. see how them numbers change it? See what C and T is equal to now? 17,511, 28,317. It's going to change again. 
until the, until the system just says, okay, this program is not doing anything productive. It's just staying in one place, and I'm going to kick it out. It's taking up too much computer resources for the, for the file, the, the, uh, the, the execution time that it was given. So see how C and T is incrementing, but Z is staying at what? Zero. I mean, not Z. X is staying at zero, and X is my control factor. You got what I'm saying? X is that control factor. So you would be stuck in an infinite loop, and then you're wondering, what's wrong with my program? What's going on? That's because you have an infinite loop, and the program cannot move forward based on the, uh, the, the test conditions that you have. All right? So that's an infinite loop, and th those things can drive you crazy. I mean, man, you programming, they can drive you crazy. So you got to be able, be able to go through your code, know what you what you uh what your values are, know how you uh calculating them, incrementing them, whatever, because you can have all kind of issues. All right. So uh, that's infinite loop. Now on this part, I'm talking about mod modularizing the code in the body of a loop. Okay. Modules can be called from statements in the body of loops. In fact, modularizing the code in a, in a loop often improves the design. And now, what they're always saying is, if I go back to online GDB, and I don't have an example, but I'm going to show, I'm going to give it, and let you know. What happens is, if I have this loop here, rather than have the loop portion in here, I could... Well, I can have it call a function and let it execute a function from that loop, which would make my, my information much clearer than having a whole lot of lines like uh, my main function, but then in my while loop, I have uh, 200 lines in that while loop. You know, try to break it down what you call in modules, and it'll make it a whole lot uh, easier to work with. All right? So... It says, for example, in program 5-1, the statements that get the amount of sales, all right, calculate the commission and display the commission can be easily, can easily be placed in modules. So what? Rather than me doing it while I'm doing the calculations in the mod, in that, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the loop, I can call modules and it'll make my, make for a much easier to read program. And I can go to my module function and see exactly what's going on. But in my loop, it's just saying maybe compute. Uh, my module might say uh, retrieve uh, uh, sales amount. The other one might say uh, calculate commission. You know, so it just makes it much easier. All right. So the modules can then be called in the loop. All right. All right. Like shown in Figure Five Four. So look here. What happened? They have what? Uh, where it is. See here? While keeping, keep keep going, all right? Display sales commission. But look, what happens is they call in a function that says what? Get me sales commission or do, do, see how please in a sales and then uh, 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 then give me the information. Well, not even that. It got all of the information. The sales, the sales, the sales commission, the uh, sales commission uh, formula and then uh, the output of the sales commission. And then what? It actually, if you wanted to calculate it again. All right? So that's what this uh, call function did. It did everything that it previously had uh, in that function, except for what? Do you want to calculate another sales commission? All right? But like I say, it'll make it easier, but you don't have to. But sometimes it will make your program a whole lot easier to work with. All right? All right. So now, um, well, let's see where I stopped in this chapter. In this, all right. Yeah, modularizing. So, and we somewhat know how to use modules, but we'll, we'll work on modules and you'll work on them in the, in the next, uh, next uh, chapter, next uh, class, like when you get to 193. So look here. This is what they're saying about the modules. So in this flow chart, same thing here where I declared the uh, variable keep going and all the other variables, but then look what happened here. Uh, and then no, it took the uh, variables that they, they use for sales, commission, uh, and actually the rate, 
and they put it all in the sales commission function where they could calculate and get everything and then come back and continue on. So look, it got the uh, keep going, set it equal to Y, so it gonna automatically perform this. So now, uh, it calls the com uh, show commission, which actually does what? It get all this, uh, it declares the commission rate and all this, uh, well, the com yeah, the commission rate, and then it uh, allows you to declare sales and commission, and then you can input the sales, and then you can calculate your uh, commission, and then output your commission, and return back to the program, and then display what? Do you want to calculate another? If you put yes, you input uh, your uh, value for keep going, and then what? If it's yes, then you're calling a uh, sales commission, show commission again, and doing the exact same thing. But it makes it what? Much neater here, and it does make it much neater what? In your actual coding, okay? So you don't, you don't really know what's going on, but you know you're doing something uh, with the uh, sales commission, all right? So now, the do-while loop, which we also looked at, the do-while loop will allow you to perform statements at least one time, that body of uh, the while, at least will do while one time. So you have learned that the while loop is a pretest loop, meaning that it has to test it. If it's true, then it falls in the loop. All right. If it's not, it it it, it uh skips that uh that body of text, body of our statement. All right. So that pretest loop means means that it tests its condition before performing any uh, an, an, an iteration. But the do while loop is a post test loop. All right. It performs the uh the body, and then at the very end, it asks the question. Uh, is it greater than that? Is it less than that? Is it equal to that? If it's not equal to that, et cetera. All right. And then based on the results, it will either, if it's true, it'll perform it again. If not, it will kick out, which we saw uh, previously. Or we, we could look at it again. All right. So look what happens. The, uh, in the, in the flow chart, rather than ask the question first and then execute the body of statements, the do you execute the statements first, and then you ask the question, and what? If it's true, you execute the statements again. If it's true, you execute the statements again. True, execute the statements again. If it's false, then you continue. So see how the logic is a little bit different. Now, you might say, well, Mrs. Vessel, why would we want to perform the statements or what would be a situation where we may want to perform the statements at least one time before we do anything? One good example would be if you write in a program that have a menu, right? Normally when you have a menu, it might say, okay, one, add something, two, delete something, three, print something, four, exit, right? And then you could have what? In a choice. So what? Rather than try to ask a question if to execute that menu, you want to execute the menu regardless. So you would say, do, show me my menu, and now let me make my choice. If my choice is a one, do whatever. If it's two, do whatever. If it's three, do whatever. If it's four, do whatever. If it's five, whatever. If it's exit, I'm exit. And then if it's neither one of those, please enter a valid choice. So that's, that would be another loop within a loop that would perform until they enter a valid choice. Okay? Now, um, so writing the do while. Remember, we did that. All right, showed you the example. It's do, and remember, all the statements in C++ or commands are lowercase. They just, they just wrote it in the book this way. Do, and then open curly brace, close curly brace, your body of statements, Right, whatever, whatever number of statements you have, and then what? While, which would be lowercase, and then in per, in uh in uh parentheses, you would have whatever your condition is, followed by a semicolon. All right, you can't forget that. Followed by a semicolon. All right. So let's do that right quick. All right, let's go back to here, and I'll I'll draw this down here, and what we'll do. We'll take this state. We'll take this. All right. Let me open this up.
All right. I'll open this up and I'll just change this. I'll just say, I'll make this do. All right. I'll take this away from here. All right. So you see how you pretty much is the same or it's similar, but uh, the format is different. All right. And semicolon. I've just, oh no, not, not, not yet. I've just made this a do while statement, meaning what? It will execute the first one first, or uh, the series of statements first, and then uh, go back and test. But remember, this was an infinite loop. So now, so what happens here? It's gonna, it's gonna say do. It's gonna automatically perform what? Outputting of the X, outputting of CNT, and outputting of uh, while loop BRCC, all right? But really it's the do while. So that's an example. It'll perform that first and then uh, it's gonna ask the question. So we got do, we got do. Then everything should be in a body, open curly brace, close curly brace, all right? Then we got our while statement and then we have our condition followed by a semicolon, okay? And if we run this, if we run this program, it should execute, what, three times? See? Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, which is three. All right? Now, but check this out. Like I told you, I could make X equal to 10, 100, anything greater than anything three or greater, and how many times you think it's going to perform this body of uh, statements? All right, we got do. All right, it's going to perform this. While X, okay, it's going to increment X. X is what? A hundred, oh, a thousand. So it's going to say what? A thousand is equal to a thousand plus one. So it can be a thousand and one. While a thousand and one is less than three. Is it? No. So it's going to what? Kick out. So it's going to perform how many times? Only once. So when we run this, we should get only one iteration. See? Only one time. Because what? X was a thousand. All right? All right. Right. So it's, well, well, here was a thousand and one once we incremented, but it was a thousand when we output it. All right? So um, you got to make sure that uh, you know which, which one of the loops you are using. But this is the do while. All right? So it says, in general, in the general format, the statements that appear in the lines between the do and uh, the while clause or the body, okay, and we should understand that. The condition that appears after the while clause is our Boolean expression. Like I say, X greater than whatever, Y not equal to whatever, or whatever it could be. You compare it uh, to different uh, logical comparison, all right? Now, when the loop executes, all right, the statements in the body of the loop is executed, and then the condition is tested, all right? So it executes the body first, then the condition is tested. If the condition holds true, the loop starts over, and the statements on the body are executed again. And this, this cycle is continued until the condition is false, all right? And if the condition never uh, uh, holds to be false, then what happens? Then we have an infinite loop, all right? So that's one thing we got to always be mindful of, class, infinite loops, all right? Got to be mindful of that. So uh, it says, uh, in sh as shown in general format, you should use the following uh, convention when, uh, when you write a do-while do statement. Make sure that the do clause and the while clause are aligned. And that's just so that you can know where your body matches, all right? Because I'm telling you, when you, if you're writing code and you, it, it's just like saying, uh, uh, have a, uh, having a, 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 a junkie desk. It's just hard to find your material or the information you need at that time if it's not in a place, uh, in the proper place that, that you put it. All right, so if you write code that's all jumbled, then when you look at it or somebody else looks at it, it makes it very difficult to debug and to understand what's going on, all right? So just try to make sure that you uh, 
that you uh, align all your uh, uh, curly braces up, uh, your indent properly so that you know what's going on in your program. All right? So, and now in this program, it took that exact same program that with the commission, and now what they're saying what? In this program, it will perform the what? The do logic at least what? One time, all right? So here we got our string. We declared our string, but then look, do. And we'd have curly brace here, curly brace here, and it will perform that call. And then it's going it to allow you to input your, uh, your commission values your, or with your sales and whatnot. It's going to calculate it, print it at least that one time. Then uh, they're going to ask the question, do you want to calculate another? If you put in Y this time, then it will perform a second time. If you put in no, it will not perform any other time, okay? So this is just a pseudocode example of the do uh, while uh, loop, okay? We're using that same exact program. Remember previously, previously uh, with the while loop, we had to initialize uh, keep going to be equal to Y because what? The while loop is a pretest loop where it had to have the value to test against before it falls in the loop. But the do while, you don't have to give, you don't have to give it a value because what? You're gonna perform this anyway, but then what? Here you're gonna give it a value depending on what's, what, what, what's being received at this point. Uh, input, keep going. So when you input that value, it's being assigned to keep going and then it's gonna compare whether or not it's Y or any other value, okay? So that's the that's this program, all right? And it, it operates the same exact way, all right? So let's look at the flow chart of let's look at the flow chart of that that do while, all right? I'm gonna try to minimize it so we can see everything on the screen. So what happens here is uh, you declare your variable. You don't have to initialize it. If you're initializing it, you're doing it for nothing, all right? Then you fall inside the do loop, all right? And then you call in commission or, 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 or show commission where, you, where you're going to have your variables being declared uh, and then you're going to uh, input a sales. You're going to calculate your commission. I'll put your commission information. Then you return back and continue and you're going to ask the question, do you want to calculate another? And then you're going to prompt them uh, uh, with a, uh, well then, and then this is a part of that. That's for both part of the output. Do you want to input another commission? Yes or no, or why, why for yes. Then you're going to input uh, a value for keep going, whether it's Y, whether it's any, any, any character. And, but if it's Y, you're going to continue. When it's, when it's any other character, you're going to end, all right? You're going to end the program, okay? All right, so that's that part. Okay, now, okay, it says although the do while loop is convenient to use in some in some circumstances, it is never, uh, well, it is never required, all right? The loop that can be written as a do while loop can also be written as a while loop because, but what? It has to be a pretest because we have to set a value for it to fall in. So you really don't need to do you know, you could use the while, but you still would have to what? Initialize that value where it can fall in, right? All right, so now, any loop that can be written as a do while loop can also be written as a while loop, okay? As previously mentioned, some circumstances require that you initialize data prior to execution, all right? Executing a while loop to ensure that the execution, that it executes at least one time. And that's for the while loop. Okay, all right. Um, all right, the do until, all right? And what happened with the do until? Uh, it's, it's somewhat like the do while, but look, it's just the not version of it, all right? You could have this like x greater than three, but then do the not. So you, it's, it's basically like a, a do while, but it's like do until x uh, is greater than five, you know? So it says, uh, both the while and the do while loops iterate as long as a condition is true, right? 
Sometimes, however, it is more convenient to write a loop that iterates uh, until a condition is true, all right? That is, a loop that iterates as long as a condition is false, all right? So then, uh, uh, so then, then stops when the condition becomes true, all right? So, but uh, many times, you, uh, and I tried to look for uh, some code example with do until, you used to could write with do until. Do until, I remember in, in PL1, whatever, you had do until's. But now you have the not operator, so the not is the reverse, but you still might have to change your logic uh, a little bit, like your, uh, your, uh, your relational operators. But uh, you can't ask the question uh, while it's not equal to whatever, all right? But you're using the not. So the do until is kind of irrelevant, all right? But uh, the book talks about it, all right? So, uh, but really, we don't really need to do until, because really, if I say do until x is equal to 3, all right? It's like do while x is not equal to 3, all right? So it's like, you know, if, if you can write the loop regardless of what the condition statements are. You just have to match it with the loop that you're using, all right? So that's this section, but we're not going to work or, or deal with this one per se, because uh, most programs are not written somewhat in this fashion. Because look what it's doing. Do this, okay, until password equals whatever. So what? I could rewrite this, and I could say what? Do, and I could say, while password, uh, uh, I say do, okay, and then say what? While password not equals this. So it's going to what? Keep doing this until what password is equal to this. So you see how you can rewrite it, all right? So you can say do and then say while and then put password and rather than equal, put not equal this. So if the password doesn't match, it's just going to keep going through. It's going to keep going through. It's going to keep going through. So let's write that code. Cause like I say, you don't you don't really need it. And like I said, I've I've tried to look for commands that don't really have none of the commands in there. So let's say we will say do, all right, and uh, and let's say uh, I'll put in a char value, all right. I'll say, what did I do here? Uh, control Z. All right, I'll do a char value. A char. Oh, I could do a string. I'll do char, char, let equals, I'll say A. All right, so char while let equal A. All right, so I'll say do this, and I'll, I could say something like while let not equal A, all right? All right. And then down here, I could say, uh, enter. All right. And we know the, uh, all right. I'll say just type A. All right, to rerun. All right, so now, uh, then I'll say CNA. All right, so this do is going to do this while let is not equal to A. So I run it, all right? Oh, well, what happened? CN. It was not, oh, I didn't declare it. Did I declare that? Oh, let. Let my fault. Y'all let me do this. All right, let. Now, let's run it. All right, rerun. Type A to rerun. I'm going to type, uh, no. Yeah, well, I have to type A. No, I messed up. It's going to exit. Yeah. While, while this is equal to A. All right. I can tell you. All right. So this go this gonna perform while it's equal to A. You understand? 
So as long as it's equal to A, it's going to work. I say, do you want to do it again? No, 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 anything. So what I can do is uh, I'll put the not in now. And all of a sudden now, when I run it, if I put A, no, doo -doo 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 -doo. while let not equal, while let equal A not, it should be the not part. Uh, I put in A, then take it the true part, make it the not part. Uh, that should have worked. Okay, do this. Wow. And that's let. And this was what? Do while password not equal this. Right. Okay. So we go here. As long if it's equal to A, right? If it's not equal to A. Okay, well, I, yeah, this is not equal. Do while let not equal. Not equal A. All right, and run it. All right. So if I put in E, it rerun. You're right, it's gonna rerun. So I'm looking for it to equal to A. And then if I, I could put uh, that if statement they had, if not, if let not equal to A, do whatever. All right, so I could have this in this clause to to uh to rather than do this until this way, I'll put the not in here while it's not equal to this. All right, so I don't have to use the until. All right, I can use while it's not equal to, and then when it's equal to, then it'll, it'll continue. All right. Oh, hold on. okay. Yeah, here we in the notes. All right. So let's say inner, it hit inner area, sorry. So like when I entered uh, uh, anything other than A, it uh, re rewrote, it reread, run, ran the program. Any other thing than the A, rerun the program. When I put in an A, it should exit the program, all right? And so when we run again, when I put in A, see, it exited, all right? So like I say, you can, you can change your logic so that it'll fit for what you need. All right, so look what here. And it's like said, the same thing basically, but it's like the false. The false logic gonna make it com continue on, you know, to do this, all right? And this is, this is a if statement within the what? While loop, which is totally fine, because what? Display in a password, and then you're gonna input the password. If the password is not equal to that, sorry. But then what? Here you're asking, uh, if it's not equal to that, you're saying sorry, but then again, you drop in here and asking if password equal to password. If it is, you confirm and kick out. Otherwise, you're going back up here and performing the logic all over again until you find that it's equal to this, all right? My, my code just didn't have that if logic in it, all right? It had, the, it had all this and this, but it didn't, ha didn't have this if logic right here in it. All right, so that's what that uh, code allows uh, to happen. Okay, so now this is the thing: deciding uh, which loop loop to use. Okay, not all programming languages provide a do until. I mean, like I said, the newer C plus plus they don't they don't deal with that. All right, because what you can write a do while loop that is logically equivalent to the do until which is what we just uh, wrote and was talking about. You know, you don't have to have the do until, you know. Now, it says in this section, we have introduced three different types of uh, conditional uh, control loops, right? The do while, the while, and then the do until, right? When you write a program that requires a conditional control loop, a condition control loop, you will have to decide which loop to use, whether you're going to use the do or do while, whether you're going to use the while or the, or the reverse logic for the do until, all right? You want to use the while loop to repeat a task as long as the condition is true, all right? You want to use the what? The while loop. As long as something is true, you use a while loop. The loop 
The while loop is ideal for situations where the condition might be false at the start, okay? And in such cases, you do not uh, want the loop to iterate at all because what? If I have a loop uh, for, say, grades, where students need to make greater than 85 to get bonus, I could ask, uh, you know, when I read in a score, and I could ask if the student score is greater than or equal to 85, do whatever to give them bonus. So it reads the score, and if it doesn't fit that condition, I don't want to execute it at all. I just continue on to the next record. So that's what it's saying. All right? So the do while loop is also a candidate in situations where a task must, task must be repeated as long as a condition is true. It is the best choice, however, uh, when uh, you always want the task to be performed at least what one time, all right? Regardless of whether the condition is true or false at the beginning. Remember I told you about the uh, menus. Remember the menu systems is the one that actually uh, is best for that, okay? So now, um, the do until, all right? And like I say, you can kind of uh, write your logic uh, to, to kind of combat that. The do until also performs the task at least once, all right? It is best. It is a, the best choice, however, when you want to perform a task until a condition is true. The do until loop will repeat as long as the condition is false, okay? When the condition is true, the do until loop stops. All right. Now, uh, how much time we have? Oh, we have a good bit of time, right? What time it is? We're time? out of time. Huh? We're out of time. What time class in? 2.45. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, well, what I, I'm, I'm going to show you this loop, and then we'll finish. This is the control, uh, uh, count control loop. This is the far statement. Now, uh, if we go to online GDB, all right, I'll, I'll remove, I'll make this bigger. And, man, I'm, I'm just talking and talking. Uh, here we go. If I... Uh, Take the, I'm gonna take all this out. I'll, I could, I'll just take everything out. All right, with, uh, with that loop, really. Now, what I can do with that for loop, that for loop, the format is this, for and parentheses. Now, there's two ways, but I'm gonna teach you this way first and then we'll talk about the other one next class here. I can initialize a variable in this loop because it has its own scope, okay? So I can say for int, x equals zero, all right? I'm, that's my initialization. Everybody got that? So I'm, my starting point for x is zero. So for n, x equals zero, x less than five. So now what? That's my point. I'm counting from what? Zero to less than five. So that would be what? Zero, one, two, three, four, Five is not less than five. So zero to less than five is what? Five. So if I wanted to print out something five times, I could write something like this. And then what? Semicolon X plus plus. The plus plus just says what? Increment X by one each time I perform my loop. So now I could use the curly braces or I don't have to. It'll default to the next statement just like with the uh, if, but I always tell you, put the curly braces because when you start adding multiple statements, you can run into problems. So I could say something like this, see out, well, just do, I'll do uh, one line. Uh, uh, BRCC. Now, when I do that, how many times will it print out BRCC? Five times. So when I run this, see here, one, two, three, four, five. So I've just, we've just wrote a loop with, where we started with four, then in our parentheses, int x equals zero. So we're initializing a new variable in, in, the, uh, in this scope. X is zero. Then x gonna, uh, then my condition is 
while x well for x less than five as long as x is less than five all right print this then increment so the first time through and what i could do here i could do it like this i could do uh so you can actually see x and when i run it again see uh well x is one two three four why is there whoa, 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 whoa. oh i messed up oh yeah this goes here my fault this goes here i'm gonna take this out all right so when i run this and we'll we'll go when i run this see look when x the first time through x is zero so what it's going to see out x which is zero brcc it goes back up here it's already initialized so the first time it initialized it it finished with it now it increments so x becomes what one right x plus plus add one to x is one less than five yes all right so it don't output one brcc all right goes back up it becomes what two is two less than five yes Prints out two BRCC. Goes back up, increment. Is three less than five? Yes. It prints out uh, three BRCC. Goes back up, increment. Four. Is four less than five? Yes. Prints out BRCC. Increment. Is five less than five? No. It kicks out. So that's the for loop. So uh, I want to stop here because I'd go on for all day. But uh, this is uh, loops. And we're going we're gonna to talk about them a little bit more on next class period. Uh, hopefully we can uh, have it to where I, I give you a little small something to write, and then we can kind of look at it and, and modify it to get it right so you can kind of understand it. Because just looking at me doing it, it, it's okay. But when you start putting that syntax in, that's when you really see, oh, man, I need that semicolon. Oh, I forgot this. I could see it on the board. Or on on the computer, but to actually write it is a little different. All right, so I'll see all you you all on Tuesday, right at one thirty. Okay, and make sure uh, hopefully everybody signed the roll. All right, if you didn't sign the roll, uh, you got to let me know something. All right, so uh, I was a little I'll, bit late. I I actually forgot I had class today. Who that is? Larry. What's up, Mr. Larry? So you, uh, uh, you want me to add you to the roll, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, well, I tell you, I tell you. All right, but uh, what I'll do though, uh, I'll post the, uh, I'll post the, uh, the, uh, the lecture. All right, because I think I posted the one from Tuesday also. But everybody, anybody took the test yet? Because the test should be available. All right, I made it available till I think Tuesday of next week. All right. For that, I think that that's chapter four, right? Chapter four test. Okay. So just going on, like I say, study up until whenever, or take it one time, study again, and take it again, however you do it. All right? So anybody else? I know Mr. Lyra said he need to, uh, he need me to sign the role for him. Anybody else? Okay. All right. So well, I'll, I'll download once this uh, finish uh, the up uh, downloading and, and, and put and they put it in my uh, canvas. I'll upload the file so that you can have this uh, lecture. And uh, like I said, I'll add Mr. Lowry to the uh, row. All right. So I'll see y'all on next class period. So have a good one. All right. All right.